Hey everyone, welcome to the special double edition of Group Text and Behind the Velvet Rope with David yes. Yontef and Melissa Rivers. Yes, okay, we love our little catch ups. We have so much to talk about. So much. I mean, where do you want to? I don't even know where to begin. Okay, and normally we stick to reality TV, but we have had a story that has been better than reality TV. The Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey hook up. They're, what are they calling them this morning? Trailer. They already have a name. Trailer. Because he's Travis and she's Taylor, so they're trailer. Not the most attractive name. Not the most attractive, but kind of fabulous at the same time. Yeah. So for those of you, like I had to explain this to David, how it started was Travis Kelsey was a big or is a big Taylor Swift fan. I don't know if he's a fan of the music or just her. And the story was that he went to, and he's a big player for the Kansas City Chiefs. He went to her concert when it was in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium where the Chiefs play. And the story is he was trying to get her a friendship bracelet with his number on it, and he couldn't get to see her. So the story keeps playing out, playing out. It's constantly like they're talking about it on air, on his New Heights podcast with his brother, but still my heart, Jason Kelsey. And it goes and goes, and there's all these crazy rumors, and Taylor's camp isn't saying anything, and the rumors are getting so big, and it's taking on a life of itself. And then suddenly these little weird things start happening. Like his brother keeps going, yeah, they're together. Ha, huh? just kidding. Then he suddenly wore a John Mayer t-shirt on air. And everyone's like, hmm. And we know the Swifties love a good Easter egg. And it, it went so far as the networks, specifically NBC, which was carrying the Sunday night football game, did promos talking about it, like that were hilarious, like making fun of like the they're all doing the research on Travis Kelsey for the week and it's all about Taylor Swift. All of a sudden, the announcers go wild and they look up and sitting in a box with Travis's mother is Taylor Swift. And the place goes wild and everyone's freaking out. And they have all these little like clips of him like waving at her. And then they have him point her out to his quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, and he's like waving. And it, he keeps looking up. And so then they left the stadium together in this perfect convertible. He's wearing some sort of Taylor Swift outfit that's like a message to the Swifties about a song she had a long time ago and off they drive into the sunset. So that's their big reveal. Also immediately everybody noticed all of Taylor's friends suddenly started following Travis Kelsey. All of them. Like, like, lively, like lively, yeah. All her two best friends, like poof, everybody was following him. Okay. Cute, sweet, I personally, after digesting this, feel really manipulated. Really? Why? Because, like, and I, I love Taylor Swift. I wouldn't call myself a Swifty, but I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. As a performer, I think she is one of the best of all times. And I like her music. I'm just not, like, a crazed Swifty. Everything is so calculated that I feel like you just want to feel like something's honest and a little bit organic and allowed to sort of play out with all this out this huge storyline around it yeah Taylor Swift has it I mean I love also how you call me yesterday and we we're talking about this and yeah. I'm like is this guy a big deal, Melissa? And you, oh, like, basically, oh, you almost dropped the phone and hung up on me. Okay. <laughs> Melissa's like, I, I got to go, David. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm a gay man. I don't know football from baseball. I'll, I'll be honest with you. But they are talking about, first of all, yesterday on Monday, Travis Kelsey uh, jerseys 
flew out of every place that sold them. There's been a thousand memes that are hilarious. Everyone is talking about the fact that all these Swifties are now going to have to learn about football. It's going to be a ratings bonanza whenever uh, the, the Chiefs are on TV. I'm sure they're quickly redoing the schedule. They know Arrowhead Stadium, which is already, already sold out, that there's going to be a premium on tickets. So it was such a big deal that the N- the NFL Twitter put up a post saying Taylor Swift is at Arrowhead Stadium. Like, holy shit. Like, she is literally the most famous person in the world and has more control of pop culture than anybody in the entire world. But she is cool as I think this is, I'm feeling like I was really irritated by this yesterday. Why do you want, do you wish that she called you and told you this was happening? No, I wish it didn't feel so calculated and staged. I just, and with the little Easter eggs being dropped, you, I, I felt like there was like, but what is she supposed, they can't just show up somewhere together, but I suppose they could. But I just felt, and it was two people in on it. There's two people in on it. Look at it. People are going to be going to her shows now and wearing his jerseys. But oh, how yeah. is this? She is leaving. Isn't she leaving? And I am not a football person or a Swifty. So I really, this is out of my wheelhouse. But like, isn't she leaving on her U- European tour soon? And he's in season? Yes. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. That could be why this might be the one game we see her at. Now, Sunday was also the day that NBC decided to announce who was going to be the Super Bowl performer, which is Usher. And nobody gives a crap. Nobody even knows. No, this this is this is I mean, think of all the Swifties that are going to be trying to get tickets now for this. It's like to, to see a game. Whether she's there or not, they'll be just be thrilled that he's in. I mean, this is yeah, she I, I agree whether you love her or not. She is truly the biggest star. In, in the, world. the world you I just mean, it's she, not debatable by the way and if her followers were a little bit older she would be such a political weapon you know it's like oprah was a little while back with everybody like if oprah says it's good it's good yeah kind of thing. but i just i'm happy i think they're a really cool couple do i think they're well matched i don't know i don't know either of them but my favorite meme i saw or my favorite thing i saw was someone saying, thank God she's not dating another guy who looks like a Victorian era child with the with uh, the plague. <laughs> they approve of him, right? <laughs> oh, they're all going bananas. And remember, her whole thing is 89. His jersey is 87. Oh, it's all it's all gone bananas. And they the wow. best was in all the post game interviews, them asking all the other players and coaches and Andy Reid, who's the head coach of the Chiefs, who's just a character unto himself. They go, in the post-game interview, they're like, so did you get to meet Taylor Swift? And he said, I've met her before and walked off the stage. Really? (laughs) Sick of it. Well, I I mean, I was going to say, he could expect that this is only the beginning. It will probably be brought up in every interview. Yeah, but you know, not great for the for the team or the football season. But now you matched my big thing with your own big story. And I actually cared about your big story, even though you didn't care about mine, but that's for a private conversation. I tried to care as much <laughs> as I could, having never heard of this gentleman in my entire life before or whatever team you just mentioned. But I, I tried. <laughs> I mean, if this were Madonna or Cher dating someone, you know, and now I'm showing my age. I mean, you're, I said, you're like very current, Melissa. You're up on, I mean, I know Taylor transcends age and generation, but I just, I don't know any of the music. I'm really bad. Even I'm, I'm, my, by the way, even my 62 year old, very, very, very straight boyfriend was like, wow, good for him. <laughs> like literally. I just understand how big she is, but you know, other than one or two songs, I couldn't name anything that is in her catalog. I'm sorry, everybody. It's okay. You'll t- they'll current. take a- they'll take away your gay card. 
You were excited about my story about Shannon yes. Bedore, though, is what you're saying. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, this video, you know, you watch the video, she, she, you know, she's, look, she drinks a lot. I mean, a lot of the housewives drink a lot, right? So she, there's this video, I mean, if you've seen it, she comes around the corner and she does like kind of crash into someone's house and she keeps going and then she gets out of the car, like down the street and the dog gets out of the car and then she calls 911. So she was arrested for like a DUI and a hit and run. But how could it be a hit and run if she stopped and called? I, I didn't know you could do a hit and run. I thought a hit and run was only a human being. I didn't realize no. a hit and run was a house as well. Or anything else, a car. Oh. But the whole point of it is the run part is you leave. Well, I think maybe she drove a little bit because she did drive. Maybe if you drive even at all that maybe. you're considering. So, I mean, it's like, what is going through your mind? I mean, I guess you are drunk and then you're driving. And I mean, I would hope that you realize like, wait, I'm actually too drunk to drive. I would hope that that's the reason you get out. And plus, let's face it, you are going to get caught with a digital footprint in, you know, 2023. So at and least you she hit did a the house. Right. Yeah. You hit a house. And with ce- celebrities always seem to be crashing into houses, which is a whole other bizarre thing. You and Davidson, I could do a whole show yeah, just Pete based Davidson, on people. Who, yeah, Pete yeah. Davidson hit a house. How do you miss a house? Well, that's a good question. But you and I have never driven completely inebriated. So no. I guess, I mean, so look, I mean, she's, I mean, where this goes from here, you know, I think it's, look, she's staying with Vicki Gumbelson at the moment in Orange County. Vicki has come to the rescue. You know, a lot of her so-called friends are speaking out on this that have podcasts or platforms. It's just like, who's really your friend in this time of need? Like, you know, like if something really happened to you and then I went on my podcast, I, I, I wouldn't. Now, if I didn't know you, I would talk all about you, of course. But when it's like your friend, you're like, I don't think I should be revealing all this information that I know confidentially. So I think it's I think it's weird that a lot of her friends are speaking out on their respective platforms. You know, and none of this is being filmed for Bravo at this time. They've already wrapped. They've already had the reunion. So it's just like, where do we go from here? And, you know, should stuff like this be getting captured for TV? You know, I feel like and you and I have talked about this. I almost feel like the housewives specifically need to be covered almost in real time. That they need to be shooting, editing, airing. Because so much seems to happen when they're already cameras down. But I also think then how do you craft storylines? Again, you know, if you actually followed someone around in their day-to-day life, you would fall asleep. That's maybe the most boring TV ever. It's it, there's got to be like an in between because they pick cameras up for like Drew and Ralph's divorce on Atlanta. They pick cameras up for Kyle and Mauricio. They pick cameras up for Vanderpump Rules. Like this is so it's three times this they they physically can't. The season is done. But to your point, I wonder if there's some change that should come with reality TV just in the modern age that we live. I, I don't know how to do it either. I mean, it would be a production nightmare, right? I think it would be a production nightmare unless they do it. On some sort of a, it would still be a production nightmare. I'd say on some sort of a digital platform. News organizations seem to be able to do it and tell stories in real time. But they're little vignette stories. They're not these overarching season long. Obviously, please everyone don't come after me saying that the news is, we all know the news is produced vastly differently than a reality show. I have worked in both. I've worked in both. I definitely know the difference. But how, if you're Bravo, how do you capture this other than in a PR way? That's the big question. Because, like you said, the season's not airing. The season's over. So do you do it as we pick up talking about this? So Andy has not addressed this really at all why 
you know, I have my own thoughts. I mean, it's a really serious thing. And like, I just, I always go back to like timing, right? I mean, I feel this whole thing with Bethany and this reality reckoning is now seeping into, like we just had what we had on Below Deck, which was in the past. But I feel, I hear Bethany in my ear when something like this happens, right? Like to me, I keep going back and forth. Like, let's just say that Shannon keeps her job because this would be a great storyline for next season, right? Like this plus recovery. But this is like real life, right? So. Yeah. If she keeps her job, the day that that's announced, you don't hear Bethany going off on on TikTok and Twitter. And I think Bethany's going to just come out guns blazing. Not, I mean, so do we have a whole network now that's afraid of Bethany Frankel? I don't know. Well, I think you do on one hand. On the other hand, it's someone's personal choice if they want to go back to the situation. Obviously, because this has happened so publicly, she is going to have to go into some sort of recovery you can't get fired because of it, but you got, I mean, that's got to be the personal decision, but the whole Bethany thing is actually becoming bigger than Bravo, I think, ever thought it was going to be because so many past celebrities, Bravo celebrities, whatever you want to call them, have talked about they have felt so used and abused and in unsafe situations in these during these shows. And, you know, especially having done one, you're behind between a rock and a hard place because if you don't do anything that's interesting, it just goes on longer and longer and longer until you're finally like, fuck it, I need to get out of here. I'm going to make something happen. Or you take yourself out of the, the, the unsafe situation. It's like life in that sense. No one is holding a gun to your head to make you stay in an uncomfortable situation. Now, granted, they all say, oh, I'm going to lose my job. True. On some levels. You know, I think because this all plays out so publicly, in one hand, on one hand, it's a little like, this is so wrong to be playing out publicly. But on the other hand, it's kind of good for people to see if people start to quit and say, I don't need to be in this situation. At least these people don't. They're not, you know, you know, have six jobs and scraping by to, to, to be able to feed their children. But if Shannon wants to stay, which I'm just thinking she does, I shouldn't make such assumptions. And then, I mean... But if Bravo's like, we recognize a real actual problem. Well, they might now, say she has to go into recovery yeah. to keep her job. But they can't say she's fired because she's got a problem. Right. I think you could probably say that she can't stay on the show unless she goes into recovery of some sort. Right. Now, I don't think what people know is there's these paid people called sober buddies which travel all around with people that can afford them who have a hard time be staying sober. Uh, they're sent out on tour all the time with uh, musicians, and they're literally there to help keep the person sober, organize meetings for the crew who wants to go, and make it a less stressful, less stigmatized, uh, a thing to be, meaning sober or in recovery, in these sort of high stress situations, they could easily have a sober buddy in place if the person is trying to maintain their sobriety. But you also it's supposed to be real life. People are, people drink, people are out in social situations, so you can't wrap the person in cotton. Yeah. You know, but I don't think, I, I couldn't imagine that unless somebody was an inherent danger to themselves or to others in a real way, that you could actually fire someone for being an alcoholic. Right. And I think legally, you know, but I mean, granted, Bravo could just change up the cast. It wasn't the best season of Orange County and just say the two of you are gone and here we go. 
Yeah, that that could be a massive lawsuit, though. Yeah. Except, and I know we're getting into the weeds, every contract has what's called a morality clause, which they could easily invoke because it's about living to a certain standard and projecting a certain image and not doing anything like that. That's interesting. Yes. And I mean, you know, this stuff just came out about Bethany, you know, Bravo did release a statement like the, the head of NBC, you know, to say, you know, they talked about alcohol and they talked about the NDAs and like mental health and having psychology. So it's like Bravo has issued this response to Bethany. When it came to alcohol, they kind of put it on the production companies and said, you know, we're going to require production companies to go to alcohol training, everyone that works there and to just recognize and like, kind of putting it on the production companies. Yes and no, but all of these huge, remember, these are corporations. Mm -hmm. NBC is not just NBC. NBC is owned by Comcast, which is a publicly traded company. Having worked for E, which is part of that giant umbrella, we were required to go to like sexual harassment training program and sensitivity training and things like that which is a normal requirement, but by tossing it back on the production company, I think they're kind of trying to cover their own tracks because let's be honest, people like with the talent especially don't mandate that you sit there or they let you skip out or whatever. Listen, that's how corporations work, right? Like I've worked for a lot of big corporations too. It just, everyone is covering their own ass when just, that's how it works from every respect. Okay. Well, other than rehab being the stop on the train after you leave a reality show, the bigger stop on the train is they all end up on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, the Housewives, the Bachelors, the Bachelorettes, the, I mean, literally. The Jersey it, Shore people. The Jersey Shore. It is like a best of. It's a good gig to get. Yeah. People love it. And it pays decent, I think. Yeah, but who? Uh, we've got uh, Maurizio and Ariana this year. Two. I mean, I guess if you are, you know, look at, she had a year where she was in the press. He had a year when he was in the He's press. He's still in the press. He's still in the press. I guess it does pay to be like a big, like, you know, they're not taking the B list. Look, I'm sure Kyle was asked first and she said, I'm too busy. I'm too this. The new season is premiering of Beverly Hills. She's going to be doing tons of press. She probably said, what about Mauricio? And they're like, well, his name is right next to yours in the press. Let's do it. It pays to get, you know, they're, they're not even going to the B list of Bravo. Like they're getting the big ticket items of who's in the press. Yeah, and it it turns into positive press for a lot of these people because they get to tell their stories and they do all the little vignettes. But it is very hard work. It That show is no joke. My old orthopedist, who has since moved to Florida, used to be the, the orthopedist on call at Dancing with the Stars. And he was like, you, it's like dealing with a bunch of athletes. He's like, you have no idea the injuries that go on. It is, I mean, you better come in ready to work. It is not, there's no way to fake it. I've had so many celebrities on my show that have been on Dancing with the Stars and every single one of them is like, it's literally probably the hardest thing we've ever done. Like no matter who it is, athlete, actor, singer, they all are just like, it's literally so intense. You have no idea. It's crazy. Now let's talk about Kyle and Morgan. What is up with that? Because remember we were all saying first, again, she's her sober buddy. That's why she's around. She's helping her with her sobriety. But it's gone a step further. They're in Europe together. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I've spoken to some housewives off the record. We don't need to mention who it is. And they're just, like, coming around to being like, we don't, and and they, you know, might be in this this town of Beverly Hills. They're like, we don't understand this anymore either. Because, I mean, the thing is, you already have the publicity, right? If it's for the documentary, the video, it got Mauricio on Dancing with the Stars, the new season. Of, like, we we get it. Why are you in France together? It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. I'm starting to think that this isn't just a publicity stunt. 
it's it is it is crazy but you hear these stories all the time of people being like i fell in love with the person so it, you hear it all the time i don't necessarily understand it i can love you melissa from afar I was gonna say, but you're telling me you're not gonna fall in love with me i'm not gonna change you uh, no, it's just not. So I don't. I mean, again, I told you, you can come to my Hamptons house. I'll yeah. come to your house in L.A. and we can have a wonderful marriage. Yes. With separate night, wings. At, with separate wings. So, yes. But they don't look in all these pictures like they're separate wings. They don't like there's one picture like they're kind of holding hands like you have to zoom in. I'm so I'm really confused. I'm often not less left speechless but i don't know what's going on i'm so confused now here's the question because they did go cameras at back up is this a long played pr stunt for the next ep, next uh, season how wh where were the ratings with beverly hills did they need a boost not last season with all the drama between Lisa Rinna and Kathy Hilton, the ratings were through the roof. Now we've parted ways with Lisa Rinna for lots of rumored reasons. So I think, you know, there's not a lot of drama circulating around Beverly Hills next season, but I feel personally, I don't think Morgan is going to be on the show. I think cameras up was like, let's go to the house. Let's have a meeting between Kyle and Mauricio and Farah and, you know, the daughters. I don't even think we're going to see Morgan. We might see her on dancing with the stars after Mauricio, but I don't think we're even going to. So I don't think this is for the show and cameras up is over. I mean, we're talking November 1st, like, this isn't being filmed. So I I enjoy your theory, but I don't think this is for the show. I don't know. Maybe I'm all all Taylor Swift did out and seeing Easter eggs everywhere. You, um, you, 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 you want the Easter eggs. And you would be good on Dancing with the Stars, by the thank way, you. FYI. They offered it to me years ago at a time that was not appropriate, which was right after my mom died. I did not think that should be my return to TV moment. And so I passed. I know the woman who's cast it for years and she's lovely. Um, I would have put out, if I, in her shoes, I would have made the same offer. That's her job. And uh, never been asked since. So it could have been a great moment or you could have been in the worst pain of your life. So just think of it that way. Well, yes, but it's like, then you go, oh, I, you know, in hindsight, you're like, I would have done it a year later, but a year later they didn't want me. So there you go. And I'm not a reality star. And um, from so many years ago, I am seriously not as flexible. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Nine years ago, I could still do the splits. Uh, now, probably not so much. And I, my, my back would go out. Um, but I have a bone to pick with you. Tell me. You angered the stud of the sea. You angered Captain Lee. What did you do? Well, in my defense, I did not anger him. Aisha Scott on my podcast seems to have angered him. She was on and she was talking about, you know, we were talking about the season where, you know, Sandy came in to replace Captain Lee, you know, and she said, really, listen, Aisha, she didn't mean anything against it. But she said, well, I mean, I don't know for sure, but she said, well, you no, know, but listen. she also is very quirky and very funny and first of all, she's Australian and the way the, her, the way she jokes and the way she talks, she uses some really funny language. Yeah. Like I never heard of an, a salty sea dog before. Maybe if you're a yachty or into yachting, it's another thing I don't know anything about. Apparently I don't know anything about anything today, but okay. she said he, it's okay. he was, thank you. She said he was an old salty sea dog. And I mean, really what she was saying is he never should have even been on that season. Like he knows better. He could have injured someone. He wasn't well to even step on the boat. And so, you know, Sandy replacing him. Yeah, that's great. But really he never should have been there, which are, those are kind of harsh words, but she, that's her opinion. Well, I mean, who, I mean, the next thing I know, apparently Captain Lee listened to the episode because he's talking about it on his podcast and he is like, I welcome her. I will pay for her flight. 
from wherever she is in the world. I will pay for her first class flight. She can come hang out with me at my home. I will let her know that I am not old, that I am still with it. He's like, maybe I'll see her at BravoCon. But he was stuck on the fact that she called him old. So well, she old, angered him. Yes. So old salty sea dog, I think, is not an offensive way to describe someone. Um, especially, you know, a captain and, arr, and salty sea dog. Uh, my personal opinion was in that particular season she's talking about, um, yeah, he was having a lot of physical issues. And I think he had every right to try. But again, there are other people at risk. And we had just seen, remember, um, uh, what's her name got fired for having uh, Xanax that wasn't reported. Um, why am I blanking on her name? Hannah. Hannah. Hannah got fired for that. So it's a little, you know, this or that. Um, he did, when he knew he could not do it, step down. But I understand yeah. Aisha's point. I, I I get it. It became different sets of rules. And I think, and I'm defending her right now. So Captain Lee, if you're listening, this does not mean I am a huge fan of yours. I think you made all the right decisions. I think she has, first of all, calling him an old salty sea dog is so accurate. It doesn't really mean old. It means yeah. a captain who's had years and, you know, the, I'm, the, the sea is my mistress. Um, kind of, kind of thing, but she was right to have her opinion. And I think a lot of people felt that way, but I think what he took offense to, it was being called old where she didn't mean old, but he is of a certain age. If it had been reversed, I I think if he had not been him and he had watched that happen with another captain, I think honestly, he was so responsible and he is such a good captain. I just wonder if he would have had the same feelings about the person even starting on the job. Um, yeah. Okay. Cause he had a lot to say about, you know, what just happened with captain Jason and removing Luke and Laura. Like, I think I, I agree with you actually. Okay. But now you brought up captain Jason. Who is not old or salty. I'm having issues. Are you distracted by many of his recent posts? I am upset by his recent posts. He is buying and leaning into the sex symbol thing. One of the reasons I loved Captain Jason was because he was so handsome, but so not unaware, but unfazed by it and didn't let it rule him. And he is so, and he's doing ads for shoes. And I understand making the ancillary money, but these thirst trap things, I feel like it's it's literally upsetting to me because it's like, no, what made you so great was you were this handsome guy who was kind of goofy, who can't put in his own contact lenses. That was the best part of Australia was every morning, Aisha would have to go and put his contact lenses in for him. Like, you want him to be that guy. You want him to be the, oh, my God, he he doesn't play on how handsome he is or he doesn't realize and let his personality come through. And now he's all about, here I am in the cold plunge pool, and here I am with no shirt. And I, I, I want to start a petition saying, no, please don't be that person. Like, I'm pers- I've had a very, very frustrating week, week or so with being – completely upset about this Taylor Swift thing and how it was handled and Captain and, and and Captain Jason. I am not okay. It's you're having, you know, I I get listen, I interview so many housewives, probably celebrities in the first season. And I literally say to them, like, don't change. And they all go on and on. We can listen to all the audio. It's out there. I'm not going to change it. I'm like, you are. You are. And they all come back like two or three years later. I'm like, I am speaking to this person like they have never been on this show. Who is this? I I just think it's it happens. I don't want Captain Jason walking around the boat flexing. 
There was a whole thing about budgie smugglers in the last season, which are like speedos. Is what they call them in Australia is budgie smugglers. And they had to like force him into a pair because like the guys all had to do something. And he was like, never again. Now I feel like he's one step away from running down the beach and catching it on video. Like, no, stay your goofy self. That's part of what makes you so handsome. I keep seeing like those ice challenge, whatever he's doing. I mean, I'm even like, wow, what is going on here? Like, who who is this? And I know that everyone's very into the cold plunge and the ice baths. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm capable of doing it. I could do it if I had to, but... Unless it's, you know, like they say, like hydro, like that ice bath is supposed to. Well, define had to. Okay. Let me rephrase that. If it would take years off of my face, I will do whatever, basically. In addition to the shots that I get to my face on a regular basis. Short of that, I don't know why. I guess if we could raise money, sure. But if there was some way that they would say, this is the fountain of youth, just get in there. That I would do. If it really, truly worked. I'm shallow enough to do it. Also, right? big congrats to our friend, Captain Sandy. Yes. She and engaged. Leah engaged. I texted her. I said, send me a picture of the ring. She, They sent me a video of it. As I said to Sandy via text, nice work. Well played. Do you know? I mean, did she give you any details? Is the wedding no, but this it's, year? It's The ring is big. Really? Bravo has been kind to Captain Sandy. The ring is substantial. Really? Okay, I'm going to have to go check this out. I saw it, but I didn't, like, pay attention. I oh, just yeah, no, kinda... I got a whole video of the oh, ring. Wow, okay. Substantial. All right, well, you know, what season is this for Captain Sandy? She filled in for Lee. Yeah, Lee, I think she's, yeah, they're going she's done well. Season eight, but well done, ladies. Wishing them both the Happiest, happiest, happiest of futures. And you brought up BravoCon. Sandy said to me, see you at BravoCon. And, you know, everyone always saying, I just want to go on record as saying, neither you nor I have been invited to BravoCon. That and is I'm correct. not going to buy a ticket and just go walk around with like a pass. Like That is correct. You and neither, n- neither think, you nor me. I think Bravo or one of the franchises or all of them should invite us to do things with them. Just putting that up because what do we always say? We can fix all these shows easily. Within within a a one hour. One production meeting. That's it. Okay, David, I love you. Can't wait for our new update because when we, on our next update, some of the new seasons will have started. Some of the new seasons will have started. Our update after that will have been after BravoCon. But yeah, I mean, we have a lot of things coming back. We have Beverly Hills coming, Potomac. we got uh, a lot. Bra- uh, below Deck Med, all of them. We're going to be busy. Listen, we're not slowing down here. No, we're not. Love you. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.